Hello everybody, welcome. In this tutorial, we'll learn to build a best-in-class agent native application in just five minutes using LangGraph and our new code agent extension. So you can essentially build a virtual colleague for your users of the likes of the uh, Replit AI agent, the new uh, v0.dev and so on. So we'll be building Searchy, the world's best research help to give essentially a virtual research assistant to your users. So one of the things you'll notice here is shared state between the agent, which we communicate with through this AI chat interface, and the application. So these are no longer two distinct systems. Everything that happens in the agent is represented in the application and vice versa. Uh, another thing you'll notice here is agentic generative UI, which is a new type of generative UI that is based on the agent's state, uh, which is in addition to the tool calling abstraction we become familiar with. You might have also noticed here in the run loop uh, the human little part. So we'll now go and actually build this. Uh, so before we actually do, if you want to follow along, everything here is open source. Let me find the right place. So if you go to a website, copelicate.ai, go to our documentation. Uh, under coagents, this lives here, uh, and it's all open source. Everything is open source, but also this example. So without further ado, let's uh, get started. Uh, so this is our starting position, just a plain React application. You know, we have some text input here. Another textbook for research drafts, uh, we can add resources. So this is you know, a traditional application that facilitates work being done, but doesn't actually help get the work done itself. So this is one part of the application. The other part is this LangGraph agent. Very straightforward, simple LangGraph agent uh, with a chat node, a search node, downloading the research, uh, a node for deletion and performing the actual deletion with human loop here. Uh, so pretty straightforward. Uh, and we'll see how we can turn the, combine these two things in literally a few minutes of work. Uh, so if you actually open the application, you'll see it's organized into two folders, the agent folder where the LangGraph agent lives and UI where the front end application lives. It's a standard React Next.js application. Uh, the first thing we'll do is go into the page um, file and wrap the application in a Copilot Kit provider. Uh, now this binds everything that is contained inside of here, in this case, just the main uh, component with a Copilot runtime connection. Uh, and I won't go into all the things it gives us, but the thing to notice here is this agent uh, lock to the research agent, which we define in the LangGraph. So we're agent locking the Copilot to this agent. Um, next, we'll go to actually main and just add UI for this agent. Now we'll be using Copilot to chat in this case, uh, which is one of the built-in components the chips as part of Copal UI uh, with really great uh, out of the box chat experiences. You can customize it as you see here. We custom it with a custom CSS. You can also pass custom subcomponents, or you can write fully custom um, UI from scratch using our headless UI solution that you can essentially either complement the existing UI or just write your UI fully from scratch. Uh, and actually, if you go just for the customizing UI CSS, you go to our documentation under customize look and feel. You can hover over here and it'll tell you all the CSS, which is kind of a nice experience. Anyways, moving forward, if we go back to our application, on localhost, we see we have here a chat that lives alongside the application. We can talk to it and say hello, and it will talk back. All right, so there we have it, already an application. Now, the next thing we're going to do is really just a few lines ago, they're pretty magical. We'll go to the research canvas component and change the state from a standard React state that uses use state, the local state, to state and set state that we get from use co-agent. Single React hook, you see here again, the research agent, which we hook into. And now this is actually a single piece of state that's shared across here. So let's uh, tell it, for example, uh, let's you know write a research question about the life cycle of penguins. And I'll tell it, you know, use your imagination. So it doesn't keep asking me how you know, what I want to ask about. And there we go. That's all it took. All of a sudden, the set state of the agent is reflected in the application, which is pretty magical. Now, we'll keep going, and we'll see here that if we say, tell it, you know, let's perform research. Help me, right? Uh, we'll get this really long uh, scroll bar here. Uh, and over time, we'll see soon that we'll get the resources. As they come in, they'll show up here in the research draft. You guys building with, you know, agent native application or trying to are probably familiar with this uh, scroll bar, score indicator, uh, which makes for, okay, demos, you know, you can sc speed these up on uh, your GIFs they share on Twitter, but you cannot actually ship this. Uh, and over time, this not only is a loading indicator, it's also builds trust to help the user understand what the agent is doing and soon also allow for agent steering. 
the user can actually correct the agent if it goes off the, off the rails. But you cannot do any of these things if you're just sitting here looking at a scrolling indicator. And you will trust me that very soon it'll also show here the research app. But again, this is not something you can actually ship to users. Um, so how do we solve this? Well, we'll go into our agent code and just add a few lines of code for streaming the intermediate state of the agent to the application. So in LangGraph, if you're familiar with it, you know that the state only updates across node transitions, uh, and but a single node can actually execute for quite a while. So we can emit state either manually, which we do in some of these places here, just with copulicate emit state. You just add a few lines like this into your LangGraph code. Um, and also you can emit uh, intermediate state from tool calls. So for example, this is the resources. So when you saw before here, the resources that are getting figured out, uh, now this will be streaming as these states come in. So let's just add here this emit intermediate state. We're doing this a few places. You don't have to do it, but just every place where you want the state to be uh, emitted as it's coming in, and not just at the end of the transition, you can add this. Uh, for example, this is the research report itself, so that the research report streams and doesn't just um, appear in all one go. So uh, this is now done. Uh, I think we have automatic updates here, but you know, just in case, let's just rerun this demo. Uh, and now let's refresh this application and tell it, uh, you know, life cycle of penguins, uh, an analysis. And we will now tell it, you know, help me with this research. And we will see here that it's actually streaming in, which is pretty neat. Now let's add a Gentic Generative UI. We'll go back to our front end code and we will add use coagent state render. That's it. That's all it takes. And as use coagent state render, uh, and this now we specify which research agent. We can also specify specific nodes we want generative agenda, agenda generative UI for. In this case, we're doing it for all the nodes and a render function that just takes the current agent state, which will be automatically synced across all the time as it streams and returns a uh, simple React component. So now if we go back here, you actually you already see this getting kind of backfilled here. So the downloading, but let's just do this for good measure one more time. Uh, let's write a research report on the life cycle of penguins. Use your imagination and help me conduct the research. And we'll see here it is searching for information about the penguins. And we see it as it's, hap as it's doing it, it's getting updated. And that's because we're emitting intermediate state. Every time we download something, we let know that we downloaded it. Uh, and the state gets resynced again at the end of the node. So that's pretty neat. Uh, and you see here, it's now working. So that's all it took, really almost no lines of code at all uh, to do this. Uh, now the last thing we'll add here is uh, human in the loop, which will again be just a few lines of code. We'll use a use copilot action to define a front end function. In this case, delete resources, or it really should be called actually delete resource confirm, um, which uses the render and wait. So this takes the arguments that it's passed in and it returns a React component. And then whenever you the user makes a decision, you simply call the handler. So in this case, we have a button for approve and disapprove. We call it the handler with yes and no. Uh, and on the LangGraph side, the only thing we need to do to support this is we go to the uh, agent file. And as you see here, by the way, this is completely standard as is vanilla LangGraph code. Just add the nodes and all that. And we add an interrupt after the delete node for this human loop interaction. So if we go back to the application here and tell it to you know delete the three worst resources, we'll get this agentic generative UI and we'll say, yes, let's delete these. And there we go, they're gone here. Uh, so that's it, building a best in class agent application in just a few minutes. You can actually dig a lot more if you want, uh, but you can see how easy it is just in a few lines of code to take something from demo wear to production wear. Um, and again, this is just scratching the, scratching the surface. Uh, so uh, thank you for watching and please uh, let us know if you have any questions.